Hey guys, my name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm gonna be filming my favorite books of 2019 video This is honestly my favorite video to film every year I just really love gushing about all of my favorite books of the year and trying to put them in this crazy list Honestly with this year like I say every year you can take this order that I put these books with a grain of salt Because I feel like all of these books on this list are freaking incredible and all 15 of these books on my favorites of the year are books that I would highly recommend and but I thought I would start this video with some honorable mentions because in this year of 2019 I've read more books in this year than I have ever read before I'm on book 136 at the moment and I'm about at mid-December right now so because I've read 136 books it was really really hard to narrow it down to a top 15 favorites so I do have some honorable mentions that I just wanted to give a quick shout out and these are all books that I read for the first time this year that I really really enjoyed and would still highly recommend so let me just go through those real fast the first one is The Immortalist by Chloe Benjamin. This next one is Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. Next I have All the Ugly and Wonderful Things by Bryn Greenwood. Next up is going to be Regretting You by Colleen Hoover. And then I have Eleanor and Gray by Brittany C. Cherry. Miss Everything by Jennifer Weiner. Miracle Creek by Angie Kim. Ask Again Yes by Mary Beth Keen. Recursion by Blake Crouch. And Imaginary Friend by Stephen Jabotsky. Those are all books that I thought were freaking incredible and they're just going to be some of the most memorable books books that I read this year. So yeah, let's just jump into my top 15 books of 2019. Right, so coming in at number 15 is Scythe by Neil Shusterman. Scythe is a book that I went into having very <laughs> low expectations and this is actually a book that I picked up when I did my reading books outside of my comfort zone video that I did this year and I just did not expect to love this book because young adult dystopians have never really been my thing and I'm not huge into fantasy and I like sci-fi but like I just did not think that I would love this book the way that I did. I think the main reason though why this book really worked for me is because I absolutely loved the premise of it. Because in this book people have become immortal. So everybody's able to live forever and so now they have these people called scythes that their job is to go out and randomly select people to kill. It's like a new form of natural selection basically and these scythes just have to go out and randomly choose people to kill so that they can keep the population from becoming too crazy. So I really love the sci-fi aspects of this book and in a lot of ways it reminded me of Blade Runner which is one of my favorite movies so that was also like really cool. But god the, the situations that these characters find themselves in were just so interesting and so thought provoking. I don't know I just really love the discussion that this book encourages and it really just makes you think about the world and I just really just love the whole idea of it and I love that this book kind of feels like a thriller at times because there's so many like good plot twists and the plot is just so fast paced that you're just like constantly getting plot twists thrown in your face. Like, it's just great. It's so much fun. Number 14 on my list is The Passengers by John Mars. And this was my very first time reading this author, and this book was freaking incredible. This book is a sci-fi thriller that takes place in the near future where cars can drive themselves. And so we follow these eight different people who get trapped in their self-driving cars, a voice comes over the speaker and tells them they're being rerouted and that they're going to die within the next hour. And these eight people start to freak out because they have no control over the car anymore and they think they're gonna die. And these eight people are being broadcast live to the entire country. The hacker that is doing all this is asking like which one of them should be saved. Like he wants to save one of them and then he's like who should we kill first? And this book is just absolutely incredible. I feel like this book has a lot of social commentary on our society and like our cancel culture and the way that we kind of take things at face value without really like knowing the person. You know like we just hear things about people and then we just decide things based off of like that one single thing. It's just so freaking fascinating and I found all all eight of these characters that are trapped in this car to be so interesting and all of their situations are so interesting and like the way that this book goes I just was not expecting it to go the way that it did there were so many good plot twists and it was just such a fun thriller like it's one of my favorite thrillers that I've read this year and I just really love what this author is doing I think he's great <laughs> number 13 on this list is Pet Cemetery by Stephen King this book was also a complete surprise this year because I actually only picked this book up because I watched one of my friends Zoe she did this reading vlog called reading Stephen King in the dark this year and she read this book and she really enjoyed it so it really like encouraged me to want to pick up this book this was the first Stephen King book that I ever gave five stars to and it's by far my favorite Stephen King book 
And because I read this book this year, it's actually encouraged me to want to go and pick up all of Stephen King's classic books. And if you have like no idea what this book is about, it basically follows this family who moves into this new house in this new town. And behind their house is this very creepy and mysterious pet cemetery where people in the town have buried their pets and then the pets come back to life. But they're not exactly the same. <laughs> Oh my god, like gut-wrenching to read this book because it was sad. Like this family goes through a lot of things in this book and I just really connected with the family and I think that's why I enjoyed it so much. God, the things they experience really broke my heart. And the ending of this book was freaking crazy. And the ending of this book is 100% worth it and the shock value is so great and I just got chills all over my body at the end of this book. Like it was so freaking good. Number 12 on my list is Birthday by Meredith Russo. This one is a young adult romance novel. We follow these two characters named Morgan and Eric and we follow them from their 13th birthday all the way through their 18th birthday and these two characters actually share a birthday which is why it's probably called birthday. It's just really cool. And the thing I love the most about this story is the fact that we only follow these characters on their birthday every year. So like you don't get to see the rest of the year for them. You only follow them on their birthday every year. And we get to see how they've grown and how they've changed throughout the year. And it's really cool. Like I just love that writing style. Also, one of the characters is trans. That made this book so freaking emotional and so beautiful. And I've read a book that follows a trans character a few times before, but nothing has ever really emotionally gutted me the way that this book has. And this book just holds such a special place in my heart. Like I was an absolute wreck after finishing this book. Like it was just really something special. Book number 11 on my list is The One by John Mars, which yes, this is the same author as The Passengers. I think he's just doing some amazing work and I don't know why I didn't discover his books sooner, but well, I love this one even more than I love the passengers, which I didn't think would be possible. This one is also this sci-fi thriller book, but it also has this romance feel to this one because this one takes place in a future world where a DNA test can determine who your soulmate is. And so we follow in this book the, from the point of view of five different people and all of their point of views are so freaking fascinating and unique because one of the characters that we're following is a serial killer and the person that he gets matched with is just so fascinating and that was one of my favorite point of views to read about but then there was also this character Nick who is probably my favorite point of view to read about in this book but it's just so fascinating like the whole idea of this book is just really really cool and it drew me in right away but then I feel like this book just the places that it went it was just so freaking cool and I think the thing I like the most about John Marr's writing is that his books are just so thought-provoking and they definitely have this like social commentary on society like they feel like they're like Black Mirror or something like I feel like he should be writing for Black Mirror honestly. All right number 10 on my list is Top Secret by Serena Bowen and L. Kennedy. This is a male male romance and these two authors also wrote the book Him which is my favorite male male romance of all time so I went into this book with pretty high expectations and my expectations were still blown away. I absolutely loved this book. This this book follows these two guys who are both competing to be president of their frat house, which I know makes it sound like it's going to be cringe and eye roll. They start talking to each other anonymously on this dating app so they don't realize that they are the ones they are talking to until they've already caught feels. Oh my god, this book is just so cute. Like. Their romance is so precious and so soft and I just felt so much for both of these characters. And Luke is one of my new like favorite male characters of all time. Like I just really absolutely adore Luke, but Luke and Keaton both just have like the cutest relationship in this book. Like it is so freaking soft and so adorable. I really loved their like competitive energy with the like competing to get frat house president. Like it was just really fun to read and it was so cute. Book number nine on my list is probably the strangest book on this list, but that is A House at the Bottom of a Lake by Josh Mallerman. This is a book that I wouldn't go around just recommending to anybody because this book is definitely very strange and very weird. And it's also very short. It's only about a hundred pages. It's a novella. This story has stuck with me so hard throughout the whole year and I still think about this book all the time. <laughs> this is a story about these two 17 year olds. It's a boy and a girl and they're going on their first date by going out on a canoe on this lake. They discover that this house is sitting on the bottom of the lake and they're trying to figure out how that's even possible. Throughout this book they spend a lot of time exploring this house that's at the bottom of a lake. This book is so creepy 
and it's just so well done. Like, Josh Mallerman is such an interesting writer. This story definitely has one of the most ambiguous endings that I've ever read, so if that's not really your thing, then I don't know if you would enjoy this, but for me personally, like, I love when a book finishes and I'm kind of confused and it makes me want to go back and reread everything I just read and, like, analyze the hell out of it. Like, that's one of my favorite things ever, so I feel like if you're into stuff like that, then I would definitely recommend this, but I personally just loved it so much. And I actually buddy read this book with Jacqueline. This was actually the first book that we buddy read this whole year. And so I feel like this was such a great buddy read because we had so much to talk about after we finished this book because I just could not figure this book out. And I think I have a really good theory about this book, but I just love books that make you come up with theories to like understand it. You know, it's just so fun. Number eight on my list is The Bromance Book Club by Lisa K. Adams. This book was also a complete surprise. I know I keep saying that. This story follows this guy named Gavin who is a major league baseball player and he is on the brink of getting a divorce from his wife because they just have not been happy for a while. In order to save his marriage, he decides to join this bromance book club that consists of Nashville's top alpha men and they all read romance books together and an attempt to understand the women in their lives better and to understand their wives better. Dude, this book was just so cute, okay? It was so cute. Gavin is one of my favorite types of male characters because he's so confident and like strong-headed, but then he's also like incredibly soft and he's like so sweet and the fact that he has a stutter just makes him even more adorable in my opinion. God, I just loved him and Thea's romance in this book and I think why this book surprised me so much is because I'm not usually a fan of like second chance romance novels like I like to see the beginning of the romance I don't like to see them trying to win each other back like I usually don't care but in this book it was so cute and it felt very like forbidden at the beginning because Thea just like refused to talk to him so it made it really fun and it felt like a forbidden romance and the fact that they both have twin three-year-old daughters is just the cutest like their family is so cute like I just shipped their family so hard. So book number seven on my list is going to be The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelitis. This book is an incredible thriller with one of the best plot twists that I did not see coming ever and I don't know how I didn't see it coming but I didn't and I was freaking shook. And so in this book we're following this guy Theo who is the psychotherapist and he's going to be working with and studying this girl Alicia who shot her husband in the face five times and has not spoken since. We don't really understand why she shot her husband. Like there's no clear motive of why she would do that. And before she had done that, she was always like a totally chill, casual, normal person. We don't understand what happened, why she did it, and why she's no longer speaking. Like we're just trying to figure that out in this whole book. I like that we're following this book entirely almost from Theo's point of view because he was just such an interesting character to read about. And oh my gosh, I just can't believe that plot twist. Like, I'll never get over it. It's probably my favorite plot twist that I read in the whole year of 2019. And this book actually reminds me a lot of the show The Sinner with Jessica Biel. So if you liked that, I feel like you would like this too. Number six on this list is Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. This is another one of my favorite thrillers of 2019. Again, it was really hard to like rank these in an order, but I absolutely loved this book. I had so much fun with this one. And this is by far my favorite novel from Riley Sager yet, even though I've loved both of his two previous novels. This one I think is one of my favorites of the year because because I love the fact that it takes place in this kind of like spooky cursed haunted building called the Bartholomew in New York. We follow this main character girl who gets offered a job to like apartment sit at one of the apartments in this building and it's kind of like shady because like she's getting paid to live in this apartment building which is like weird it doesn't even make sense and because of that this book is just really spooky and creepy right off the bat something i definitely realized about myself this year is that i love thrillers that have like spooky paranormal vibes where you don't really know what's real and what's not and what's a ghost and it's just spooky and creepy and weird and this book gave me all of those vibes i loved the creepy creepiness of it and I just had loads of fun while I read this. I was so creeped out the entire time and I really loved the way this book ended and wrapped up. It was just so freaking good. Number five on my list is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuinston and I'm sure you've probably heard me talk about this book like 50 million times on this channel but I'm gonna explain it to you again anyways. So this story follows this guy named Alex who is the first son 
of the female president of the United States, and then it's about his romance story with this boy Henry who's a prince, and it's just one of the cutest and softest things that I've ever read. Like, not only do I love and adore the male-male romance that's happening in this book, but also this book kind of takes place in an alternate reality for the United States where a female won the 2016 election, and it honestly kind of just broke my heart to read this book because it reminds me of what could have been and how it should have been, and it really just like hurts my heart to think about the way our world is right now. This book had me bawling my eyes out at the end, and I really love Alex's character in this book. Like, I feel like there's a lot of representation in his character because he's Mexican and he's bisexual, and he's also wanting to work in politics someday and maybe eventually become president himself. It was just so, it was so great. Like, I can't say enough good things about this book. I just loved it so much. Number four on my list is The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. This was my favorite thriller of 2019. It's just the best. This book was so much fun to read. I read it all in one night and I was so freaking giddy and so alive while I was reading this book. This is another thriller that kind of has this like spooky haunted house vibe to it that I just freaking love. I ate that shit up this year. In this book, we follow this nanny who finds this job for this very like rich family and she's gonna go and like nanny their children. The house that she's gonna nanny in is like this really smart house. And so it's really like fancy and shit, but then things start to get weird when like the house will like turn on the music by itself and like the house will turn on the lights by itself and the children that she's nannying for are freaking demons. And this story starts off with our main character writing a letter to a lawyer asking him to represent her in her case because the family is accusing her of killing one of the children that she's nannying. God, this book is just so good! I just loved the spooky, creepy shit in this book. I loved it so much because our main character spends a lot of time obviously in her room at night and right above her room she hears like pacing all the time but she knows that there's like nothing up there and there's this whole like history about the house and like this garden that was in the back of the house and like oh my god it's just so spooky and it's so creepy and I just ate it up like I loved it so much. Coming in at number three is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. This book just freaking broke my heart. <laughs> if you didn't know, I mean, this book is one of the most hyped books ever probably, but this book is a story about World War II and it's a historical fiction and it takes place during the Holocaust. God, this story is just so beautiful because it follows these two sisters, which if you didn't know, I'm a sucker for books that follow two sisters. Like I just really, really love it. And so I love the fact that this story revolves around these two sisters who are going on these different journeys in this book and experiencing all these different things. This book just made me cry and it really like honestly broke my heart like nothing else could. There's this one scene towards the end that I still to this day cannot stop thinking about and it's almost been a year since I read this book because I read it in January and it still just like haunts me. I just feel like Isabel is one of the most like courageous heroic female characters that I think I've ever read about and so I just really really admired her as a character. And then I also just really loved her sister Vianne's chapters because I loved reading about the things that were happening in Vianne's life. Like they were just so interesting and historical fiction like usually isn't really my thing but I just really really connected with these two characters and it just gutted me. The number two book on my list is a book that I actually haven't even mentioned on this channel yet because I just read this book this month and I was blown away by it and it made it to my number two spot on this list and that is Someday Someday by Emma Scott. And this book just came out in November. It's Emma Scott's newest romance novel and it's her first ever male male romance novel and this book follows this guy named Max who was living in San Francisco and has moved back to Seattle, his hometown. He was thrown out of his house when he was a teenager because he's gay and so he was homeless for a long period of time and while he was homeless he became a drug addict and he's just had a really really hard life but now he's kind of back on his feet again and he's got a nursing job and he's moving back to Seattle to try to be close to his family again and rekindle something of a relationship with them. And then his love interest in this book is this guy named Silas, and they meet at this Narcotics Anonymous group where they both go because they're both recovering drug addicts. And then we find out that Silas is the son of this CEO billionaire 
dude who's running this pharmaceutical company in Seattle. And then in this book, Max gets hired to be his father's nurse because his dad falls ill. And then they meet again and it's like awkward because Silas had thought he would never have to see him again. These two characters, like, oh God, Emma Scott is so good at doing that trope where two broken characters come together and find hope in each other again. And this book is one of the best ways I've ever seen that trope being done because both of these characters went through some really awful, terrible shit. And like, there are some major trigger warnings in this book for severe homophobia and drug abuse and like some of the hardest stuff that I've ever read about. God, these two characters are so beautiful together. And I love the way that their relationship kind of starts off being very forbidden because of the fact that he's working for his dad. I just love this book so much. This book is like everything that I love in a romance novel because it's funny, but it also made me cry like crazy. I just can't believe how much I love this book. Like it was freaking phenomenal. And they're definitely my favorite male male couple that I've read about this year and probably one of my favorites ever. I just really adore Silas and Max together so freaking hard. Mm. All right. My number one book of 2019. You can probably predict what it is if you haven't predicted it yet. It was really hard for for me to narrow down my number one favorite book this year because I feel like all of these last few books that I've mentioned could have been my number one. Like I just really, really loved them all. So it was really tricky for me to try to pick which one of these was my number one. But I think this book is my number one because not only did I read this book twice this year, but also because this book just makes me so freaking happy. And this book is something I can see myself rereading over and over and over again. And that is The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. Did you predict it? You probably saw it coming, yeah. Okay, I just read this again earlier this month and it just gave me all the warm and fuzzy feelings and I just loved it so hard. And if you didn't know anything about this book, if you haven't heard me spiel about it 50 million times, this book follows this girl named Olive who has this twin sister named Amy. Amy is marrying this guy named Dane and Dane has this brother named Ethan. At Amy and Dane's wedding right in the beginning of this book, everyone at this wedding gets food poisoning except for Olive and Ethan who are their siblings. And so because of that, they offer the trip to their siblings who are going to have to pretend to be their siblings on this honeymoon or else they'll be caught for fraudulent things. And so we get this amazing hate to love romance because they can't stand each other. And then we get this amazing trip to Hawaii and we get a fake dating trope and fake marriage trope. And it's just the best. I love like Olive and Ethan have the most bantery hate to love romance ever. Like this is my favorite hate to love romance since I read The Hating Game, which is probably my ultimate favorite. Olive and Ethan are just the cutest. I love the fact that Olive isn't your conventional female lead character in this book, you know, because she has always felt like she's the unlucky twin. They call her a pessimistic buzzkill, you know, because she's such a realist. And I just love that about her character because I do love that trope of bringing together a pessimistic character with a with an optimistic character and then they bring out the best in each other but I feel like in romances it's always the girl that's like the bubbly optimist and then the guy that's like the negative pessimist and so I really loved seeing those gender roles reversed and like for once we get Ethan who's more of like an optimistic bubbly character and Olive who's more of like the negative one and like seeing them come together it was just so cute and beautiful and I feel like I just relate to Olive a whole lot because I've always felt like I'm more of like a pessimistic person than an optimistic person, you know? So I just really related to her because of that. Yeah, I don't really know what else to say about it. I just really, really loved it. And Christina Lauren has always been one of my favorites, but this is by far my favorite from them. Oh, it's so good. All right, so those are all of my favorite books of 2019. Were there any surprises on this list for you? I mean, probably not. That was exciting. This is always my favorite video to film for this channel every year. And I just really love gushing about all of my favorite books from this year. And please let me know if you've read any of these books. What are your thoughts on some of these books? Like, are these also some of your favorites from this year? What was your number one favorite book of 2019? Please let me know some of your other favorites that maybe aren't even included on my list. Like, what was the best couple of books that you read this year? I would really, really love to know. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. And to Tomorrow I'm going to be posting a video called like the best books of the decade or something like that. So that's also going to be a really fun one that you can look forward to. Thank you guys so much for watching as always and I will see you guys soon with a new video. Bye!